Bosak Tu. He just outplayed Stats there. I feel like Stats almost outplaying himself a bit there as well. And now Stats has to win on Frozen Temple, a map we've seen Terrans feel very comfortable on in the past. The ramps uh, in the middle of the map allow you high ground control and also pressure you can do from the low ground with Siege Tanks. There's so many different builds that are popular here. And Morrow's been liking Cyclone pushes. He might do it here as well. Yeah, he definitely could. Guys, we're going to jump into game number four right now. Maru on match point. Welcome to Frozen Temple for game number four. Down here in the bottom right, the Protoss in the purple. He's got to win two in a row to make it to the round of four. He is stats. His opponent to the top left in green. It is Maru, called by his foreign fans, the Marine Prince. As for a time, he was you know, taught by Marine King, who was kind of the, um, I guess, apprentice. So he, as Marine King was the king, he was dubbed the Prince, one of the youngest players in StarCraft II history. At the time, I was definitely the youngest, uh, one that was playing competitively. Was known for cheesing, all in on the ladder. He was a guy that, you know, personalities like Artosis were spinning out, like, I hit this guy on the ladder, he cheeses every game. And then he shows up for the qualifiers, and you see he's just this little guy, you know, and then he qualifies for GSL season one at I think uh, 10 or 11 years old at the time, so young. And now, here we are six years later, and he's still going strong, still very young, as he was much, yeah. uh, he was much younger before, but he's still you know, grown up quite a bit, but still quite young. And uh, he's uh, here actually playing macro games. He's got some of the best multitasking and harass uh, in the world. And considered by, by many for a while the best Terran in individual results this year. He's a bit weaker, but in pro league results and best of ones, he is uh, number one. He is top tier when it comes to Terran. And it seems like he's prepared quite well uh, for this tournament. You know, he was saying, "Oh, I didn't really practice too much for TBZ." You know, not sure if that's true or not, to be honest. But uh, coming in here looking quite good and just, you know, good mechanics, good fundamentals, I'd have to say here against stats more than anything else. He's not doing any crazy builds. He's, you know, totally out micering stats, nothing like that. Just playing, you know, straight up solid games here and looking very good. We saw that probe uh, in the beginning of the game actually scout the third base location of the Protoss. And if you guys have been following this tournament at all, we've been seeing a lot of those builds, uh, you know, where they proxy the barracks there and they, uh, try to get those units over there, but uh, not going to be the case this game. Maru doesn't, you know, maybe it's too obvious by this point, especially sure. in this tournament. Um, Marine Lord showing us some proxies for sure. Uh, and then Maru himself, also a little bit of, of that kind of action going on, getting scouted the last time he tried it. Well, in this game, we do see that tech lab coming down. So it looks like it is going to get a little bit cyclone in here. And I, I, a little bit windy. A little bit windy. Say, it yeah. might. Uh, I don't know what class or hurricane this could be, but it's going to be siege tropical tank first. storm warning, something like that. Siege tank comes out first, and then when the cyclone, uh, if, if he's going to use it, because I remember in Dawson Station we thought he would, but he just simply used siege tanks and banshees, which he could do here again. Uh, but on Dawson Station we didn't see that. Normally on this map you see cyclones after the siege tank. Just one tank comes across with the marines, and then the cyclone gets into position. Very important. This reaper lives, and he's actually getting. Like an un unnecessary amount of kills it feels like, <laughs> with these Reapers. I mean, it's unbelievable what he's been able to do in uh, this game and the previous game where he got four, I think. Okay, Medivac, second Siege Tank. What is this going to be? Okay, another Barracks. Huh. And a uh, uh, Engineering Bay. And with the scout that he got, he knows it's not Stargate. He, he knows he doesn't necessarily need missile turrets. So I think it's probably just going to be some kind of you know, Marine tank play with some infantry upgrades, the plus one, as well as stim and combat shields, impossible. The ramp is actually so powerful well. on this map too, once the Protoss tries to take a third base, so, you know, keeping siege tanks in your composition is, not just it's not gonna lose value very quickly on this map, whereas on other maps it definitely does. Reaper gonna come in here to draw units away. Oh, he also on this wants ramp. to force an overcharge too. 
Yeah, he's going to come in here. The medevac can heal these units. He does pick off several Marines already. The SCP is pushing forward, though. He wants to bunker towards the natural and also to keep this tank repaired. Nice snipe here on the Observer. He's going to try to control this ramp. Stats actually has to leave his natural here. Oh, boy. And where's the Mothership core? It's slowly coming on over. It needs to overcharge. Finally, an overcharge coming down, but the pylon immediately goes down. These oh. stalkers coming from behind, trying to catch some of these units. We'll catch a tank. We'll catch a tank, but several of them will go down as a result as well. Mario will have to bring his, uh, you know, he's going to have to basically gather his reinforcements and kind of clean that up. But this is the bigger problem. The bunkers you just mentioned, three of them are about to complete. And how will Stats be able to defeat this army? It's going to be almost impossible. He's going to have to avoid it with what he has somehow. Doesn't have a prism. Looks like he's going to try to make immortals to break out, but it's going to be a long time before that's going to work. This is looking like the beginning of the end, to be honest. I mean, we'll see what kind of damage Stats can do, but already three bunkers set up? with the Liberator on top of it, and he's making more bunkers. He's rallying over tanks. Well, actually not rallying over because of those units that are out there. So he's probably going to build up a, a secondary army back at home and eventually bring those over. But this one is so strong, too. Uh, because he can't. OK, he's just going to commit here with the Stalkers blinking in. Kills the Liberator. The tank will go down. But there's just so many bunkers here. These Stalkers trying their best to break through. Good repairs here from the SCVs. And also, they jump out. There's two bunkers left. He needs to get the Mortal on top of that bunker. And he will actually push this back. Was not the most efficient trade here for stats, but he does survive and will kill the remainder of these units. Yeah, you know what? I mean, it, it just was too much for the Protoss with that blink finishing up. He was able to micro very, very easily. Uh, once he killed that tank, that was essentially it, you know. A really nice focus on the medevac, too, to make sure he couldn't pick up that tank. And, you know, just killing both those units first, even though he had to eat a lot of, it, uh, a lot of damage. And as you said, it wasn't the most efficient trade definitely uh, the way he had to take it and he does break out and immediately takes a third base because he knows there's not going to be too much pressure on the follow-up here from our Terran player. Yeah, this is a really unfortunate position for Maru. It's, it's not over. Really losing that second tank was very huge. If, without that tank, he didn't have the backbone of his army there that he needed. Um, now, if, it, basically because he decided to stop rallying, Stats couldn't attack him directly with those Stalkers, so he knew he had to surround the bunkers. He did such a great job of it. And even though they were repairing SCVs, it was just so much DPS and only one tank. So intelligent decision here by Stats. And remember, Stats is the player who kind of touted Blink as the answer to this type of pressure with Siege tanks and sometimes with Cyclones, in this case, just the tanks. Um, and he defends it here with Flying Colors. No stim yet for Maru. It's about to be finished. Not going to be useful in the defense here, though. He's just uh, going to send these units over slowly to defend, but Sats has plenty of time to escape. He's got a third base going up, adding a bunch of gates now, resonating glaives. Maru is probably going to have to do a follow-up push of some kind or take a third base, like, right now. Like, yeah. right now, right now. That's the scary push. part, you know? Like, he went for this early push, and uh, he didn't get too much out of it. You know, he took, like, a decent trade, but at the end of it all, Stats definitely getting ahead. And this isn't Frost. He can't just throw down a third base and be like, oh, yeah, okay, I'm going to be safe. I, I kind of agree with you. Maybe the answer here is to try to go for some kind of follow-up push and find some damage. I think he has to because, he, I mean, I think he knows that, too. Not only does he not have a third CC, he's very carefully, if you notice, making sure that Stats doesn't know that. He's trying to eliminate that Observer, get uh, you know the vision off, so hiding this army as best as he can before he sends it across. Now going to bring some SCVs. Yeah, I mean, he's almost all in at this point. He's getting two Liberators out at a time, and he's making almost pure Marauder. Like half his army is going to be Marauders here. You know, he's, he's committed to three tech labs. And he's just going to come over here and try to smash Stats. He has a lot of Liberators. Stats going to try to hold the high ground. This is one of the reasons why Frozen Temple is so strong, though, for the Terran, because Siege Tanks gain value on the low ground firing upwards. Oh, nice uh, pickoff here. Going to pick off these reinforcements coming across. Really has been the theme here in this game, whether it was totally on purpose or not, especially earlier on. But it's to pick off reinforcements and make sure that Maru uh, keeps his army the same size that it is while it's attacking. Two liberation zones means he can't really jump on top of this army. This little contingency of Protoss units is not enough here. Maru is actually going to commit up the ramp. One overcharge on the right side, getting a lot of value here. The bunker does not finish, and Resonating Glaives does. He just needs to try to use these Colossi to poke and, and keep this army at bay. Maru has defeated those units that are stopping his reinforcements. Because so the war units are going to come in. Yeah. Very, very important. And now, slowly but surely, Maru is taking control of this high ground. Turrets even going down. One bunker at a time, very slowly, very meticulously here. Maru is pushing in. 
But three Colossi now out. More Stalkers being warped in to deal with the Liberators, deal with the tanks. He just needs to get a little bit closer to that Nexus. Oh, looks like Stats might commit here. All of his Adepts in the middle. Does decide to shade in. He targets down these Siege Tanks. Liberators getting a lot of value. The Bunker, not so much. It's out of range here, but Mars still has so many units underneath. And Stats, he needs to keep his Colossi alive. The Prost units yes. he has are more expendable. Uh, you know, the gateway units, but For the sure. Colossi needs those to stay alive. You're totally right, because he can warp in more Stalkers, kill the Liberators, but if he has the Colossi to deal with the high number of bio that's in here, he will be able to hold this off. He does go for another blink, though, and a nice concave here still from Maru. Stats is going to have to back off, but again, he keeps the Colossi alive, kills more Liberators, kills some Medivacs as well, gets another couple of extra swipes here from his Colossi. Now all the boys are coming across They're the map. They're coming. Here they come. This bunker is going to go down. He killed two liberators. Two more came out. I think he's got two more rallied here as well. Oh, he catches this part of the bio. He's going to see these SVs, but he can target them with the Colossi here. This bio army is much smaller now than it was before. The liberation zones are avoided here by stats. He's retreating all the way back to his natural. And this looks like just too much pros at this point. He's got a better economy. He's got more warpins here, and he has a defender's advantage, plus the tech advantage. Fantastic hold here from Stats. Maru, he is definitely all in here. He cannot go home, so he's going to continue trying. But now that Protoss army beginning to look scarier and scarier. He's got an, actually an angle here on this Liberator, getting one for free, essentially. Gets the second one, too. Blink Center here onto the last ones at the back. GG Stats will bring us to a fifth game. Close yeah. call there in this series. There you go. Maru winning on New Gettysburg. Stats winning on Frozen Temple. And that means we are going to be going into game number five on Galactic Process to end this one a much closer series than I expected. Stats just really, really fantastic hold there in that game. Insane. Insane hold.